Hey YouTube, it's ICU, and today Apple released iOS 7 Beta 2 for the devices it supports, and now iOS 7 is the first beta version of the upcoming firmware that includes support for iPad models. So I have it here running on my third generation iPad, and I'm going to demo it for you guys, and I'm gonna go over a couple of the different changes in Beta 2, and also give you guys a look at iOS 7 on the iPad. So first of all, I'm just going to kind of go over some of these applications in order here, and we're mostly going to be taking a look at the user interface. I'm also going to go over some of the more significant changes in iOS 7. Without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So as most of you have already noticed, just right off the bat, all of the icons look completely different than iOS 6, and the user interface also looks significantly different as well. That's because Jonathan Ive, who's the Senior Vice President of Design now, insisted upon a more flat and streamlined look. So let's go ahead and demo the camera here. Now let's flip it around to the front facing camera and as you can see we have some pretty significant changes inside the camera application you can simply swipe to go to the next mode you have your standard video mode your photo mode and now your square mode and taking a look at maps I really like the new redesign for Apple Maps and I actually used the turn-by-turn -turn navigation aspect of it earlier this week on my iPhone also throughout all of these applications you'll notice that the keyboard looks significantly different and actually in the background you can kind of see the applications and they wanted to give a translucent feel to the visual elements of iOS. Now unfortunately some of the applications that are available in the App Store will not have this updated keyboard. Actually right now I haven't found any third-party applications that natively support this keyboard so I'm sure that developers will have the option to include the new keyboard with the new iOS 7 developer toolkit they're introducing. So let's go ahead and just search for a city really quick and I'm going to show you guys how it looks and how it compares to two maps on iOS 6. So just zooming in here, again, we have the standard look. So right now we're just on the map view. However, we can change it to satellite pretty easily simply by tapping the eye and we can go to satellite from here. Now, again, I'm not really going to go too into depth, but as you can see, just changing it, switch to this gray interface and some applications will have a white interface, whereas other applications will have a gray interface and even some like maps will be a hybrid of the two. So let's go ahead and just zoom in here. You'll also notice that when I zoom in, I get a small scale up there in the left-hand corner. This is true across the iPhone as well as iPad models. Again, it just gives you a more realistic representation of what you're looking at, and you can kind of easily gauge what you're looking at as well. So let's go over here, and we're going to go into the 3D view. We can also go into flyover if we want. So let's go 3D, and again, you have your same Apple Maps that you're used to. I've also noticed things are significantly faster in the iOS 7 Maps app than in the iOS 6 Maps app. Things just seem to work better, thankfully, in iOS 7 Maps. I know a lot of users were complaining about Maps in iOS 6. Well, it looks like Apple is finally starting to catch up with Maps, and they're starting to make major improvements. Now, the Clock app just looks great. Once it loads up here, you'll see that. Again, we have a very flat and nice look, and it's really easy to tell what we're looking at. So we can switch between all the different modes down here at the bottom as well. And in Photo Booth, it's pretty self-explanatory. Calendar has been significantly revised, so no longer do we have the leather elements. It's just a very flat and clean look, just like most of iOS 7 is. Now, inside of the Notes application, again, we don't really have that yellow Notes theme with the binding. We just have a blank Notes interface. Newsstand has also been revised, and I think it looks great. It looks really awesome on the iPad, better than it does on either the iPhone or the iPod Touch. The iTunes Store is another great example of a flat application. It looks pretty similar to the App Store now that I think about it with the top cover flow featured content. Again, we can easily switch to different aspects of it either along the top or the bottom. It's also somewhat like Maps because again, we do have that white and the gray interface that we can switch back and forth to when we go to different aspects of the iTunes Store app. And exiting out, let's take a look at the App Store app, which of course is the counterpart to the iTunes app. So I'm going to say not now to those Apple apps. And as you can see again we have the same kind of cover flow featured items here at the top on the app store and we can easily browse through this again very flat you can navigate to different portions of the app store either along the top or the bottom similar to other apps in iOS 7 they've added a somewhat whimsical feel to Game Center as you'll notice here on the bubbles and I'm not going to sign in now so that's the extent of Game Center and inside of settings I wanted to show you guys a few quick things so now here inside of the settings application I'm just under general 
and you'll notice that we now have background app refresh. So developers now have the option to allow their applications to update in the background. As long as you've previously opened it, then it will start to update and pull different content while you're not using it. And also iOS 7 now intelligently manages multitasking, so it's a more realistic multitasking experience. However, as of now, if you want to conserve on battery, I strongly recommend disabling background app refresh if you're on iOS 7. And now another thing I wanted to show you guys is inside of brightness and wallpaper. For the wallpapers, you have two different dynamic wallpapers that you can pick from. Let me just go into the preview really quick. And you can see that we have somewhat of a live background. We can either set that as our lock screen, as our home screen, or as both. Now this is a really great addition and when you move the device, the background actually corresponds. So you can see there it's slightly moving. I don't want to move it too much because I don't want to get out of focus here. So that's dynamic wallpapers in iOS 7. Again, it's the same across the iPad, the iPhone, and the iPod Touch. So now Safari is significantly improved. Now inside of this top bar, it's not only the URL bar to type in a URL like besttechinfo.com for instance, but you can also search for things directly from this bar. So if I just wanted to search for best tech info, I could just type that in and it would instantly go to a Google search of best tech info. And that's definitely better than separating it into two bars in my opinion. However, when you're on the iPhone or the iPod touch, it does make the space bar smaller because it puts the .com option right next to the spacebar and it kind of cuts it in half. So if you have the text-to-speech option enabled, it really cuts down on the size of the spacebar. However, on the iPad, it just works great and it looks great too. And now I just wanted to demo a couple last things one of which being the background. So now, as you guys saw when I was demoing the dynamic backgrounds, once you move your device, the background actually moves too. You can't really tell on camera, but uh, I'm sure you'll be able to pick it up. Next, I wanted to show you guys Siri. It's significantly improved in iOS 7 beta 2. The interface looks better. It's more responsive on the iPhone as well as on the iPad. And it also has an improved voice. I don't know if you'll be able to pick it up in this video or not, but rest assured it does. So let me go ahead and activate Siri. Hello Siri, how are you today? I'm fine. Thanks for asking. All right, so now let me ask something that'll prompt a longer response so you guys can kind of get a feel for it. How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? A so-called woodchuck, correctly speaking, a groundhog would chuck, that is, as much as All right, and that's enough from job. Siri. Let's go ahead and just close out of that there. It was going to take a while. Siri can also do things now such as look up images as well as control and toggle different settings. So let me now give you guys a few quick examples. Find images of Google Glass. My web search turned this up. So as you can see, it does bring back the image results that I requested. Increase brightness. Okay, this is as bright as it gets. All right, so now Siri automatically increased the brightness and gave me a brightness slider and also an option to where I can click into the brightness portion of the settings application right there. All right, and one of the last things I want to show you guys is multitasking. So let me bring it up here. And as you can see, we have a really awesome interface now with some live cards. So it gives you a preview of whatever you were doing inside of the application last. However, right now inside of landscape mode, for some reason, it's actually displaying the portrait preview reviews of the applications that we were just in, even though they were in landscape. So there's definitely some optimization that should be done here, in my opinion. However, it does look really great. And another thing you'll notice is that the background here moves as well. And I'm going to conclude this video just by going over the lock screen. So now on the lock screen here, we can access Notification Center, which has been expanded to take up the entire portion of the screen. We also have three tabs, the Today View, which gives you an overview of your calendar as well as stocks. And then we have the all view, which gives you all notifications and then miss notifications. Now swiping up here, we can also access control center simply from the bottom of the screen. And now you can do a ton of different things from control center and you can access that within any application. You can toggle on airplane mode, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, do not disturb mode, auto rotate. You can control airplay as well as the ability to play music, quickly access the camera or the clock application or change the level of brightness simply like 
so. All right, and so I hope you guys liked this video, just a quick demo of iOS 7 beta 2 on the iPad, some of the changes. And I also have to say that I've noticed on my iPhone, a lot of the bugs have been corrected. It runs much better now. It's way more responsive than before. And some of the visual elements have been slightly tweaked. All right, and with that said, if you guys wanna watch my other video from today, where I demo a UDID security registration bug that will allow you to install iOS 7 on your device without having your UDID registered through an Apple developer account, then just be sure to click on the annotation that should be on the screen now. And if you want a chance to enter to win either a $100 or a $50 Amazon gift card, just be sure to rate this video up and leave a relevant comment down below in the comment section. It doesn't matter what your comment is, as soon as it's posted, you'll automatically gain an entry. And finally, to be updated more often, just be sure to like me on Facebook. And until next time, this is ICU, signing out.